All right, brother, here's your two pill. I did this uh, whole deep explanation of the two pill last time, and it wasn't even recording, so here we go again. All right, let's turn it this way just to give you a quick overview of it. Let's we'll see if this is the one with the 100 on looks a little brown. Mm, I don't know. These are looking at it in the sunlight. It wasn't bad. You could just tell on one of these amps, the 100 on right here looked a little brown. All right, man. Working our way from the back to the front. I just uh, hit this right here. Just hit that with a little hot, hot iron there. Uh, by the way, this is the soldering iron that I use. I don't know if you've seen it or not. I love it. This is the type of tip I use. A flat tip. The second I use a flat tip like this, I don't want to use nothing else, man. This right here disperses heat so, so well. So well, you'll see a lot of builders if they ever show you their irons, a lot of them use you know, flat tips like that. And when you need to get something small, you just turn it on its side. Alright, like I said, man, with the short leads, you want your leads as short as possible. The longer the leads, the more capacitance you can have, and like I said, you can have stray capacitance. I took these feedback circuits off this one. And this one, and all I did, man, was just just shorten the leads a little bit, rebend them, and put them back on there. And you can see it look a little, a little better. Another thing I'm gonna tell you about in this video that I didn't in the last video is I can see that you've had the same exact problem I had with the first uh, shoot, probably six or seven of my builds. And that is making the uh, pill strips the same exact length on both sides so all that your components can flow perfect. As you can see, I, you had this one kind of diagonal and I just kind of straightened it up. You know, so it's going over the pill a little bit right there and then this one's all the way over here. You know, I guess if I wanted to to try to match it better I guess I could have moved this right here and kind of have that one going over the peel if you want to do that I'll let you do that if you want to but um I'm just uh I don't know if I got a pill strip over here or not but I'll just kind of give a quick overview on how I do it maybe it'll give you an idea or not or something a lot of people would be against me for showing little small stuff like that, man. But hey, man, I told you I would show you this stuff from the get-go, and that's what I'm doing. Yeah, I'm sure it'll, you know, come back to me. It's a circle of events, brother. You got to let stuff out to gain stuff in. <laughs> and as you can see, I just hit the uh, transistors. The leads on the transistors with the iron. You can kind of look at that and tell. It looks a lot better. Take a look at this preamp, bud. That's one I've been experimenting with. That size relay. It's really neat, man. It's a micro relay. Really neat. I'm working on a little board with them. Let's see if I get that board over here. Uh, it's, I think it's in there. But anyway, it's just to where that relay sits on a board, and then that board sits directly on top of the uh, 10 amp relay, and it fits on there perfectly. Alright, man. Um, going back, going on. This uh, diode here, I, the, the, the lead kind of went over to the middle. I just kind of 
cut that and put it right there on that, you know, make that lead as short as possible. I would have done the same back here, but if I'd have done that, you'd have had another solder spot, and you know, just, it's okay, man. Just, you know, just remember in the future, just try to make your leads as short as possible. And uh, this hot bus, man, it was really in need of a good hot iron. So as you can see, that's, that's what I've done, man. I just hit it with a good hot iron and kind of smoothed the solder equally around. And uh, as you, you don't know if you remember the, the power wire. This is good power wire, by the way, in this one, man. It's good power wire. I hit that ground over there, too, a little bit just to make sure. But, it, you know, it kind of came up like that and then went down and soldered. I kind of just made it flat and soldered the whole thing equally. And you can still see a little bit of cotton. Uh, or I cleaned up a little bit, man. Not much. Just a little bit. I used two different types of solder on there, and the flux got kind of nasty. There's a good look at it right there. Okay, uh, next thing I saw, man, that was, uh, if you ask me, it was pretty in need of changing. All right. Pretty much what you'll see of Fat Boy and X Force uses a lot of them. We use a 16 gauge wire on the choke to the transformer. Me, myself, I don't really even like going that small if I don't have to. I know you've seen me here lately with my last couple of builds. I've been playing around with a dual B plus uh, type of uh, flow where you know each transistor gets its own wire, so each transistor is kind of powered individually so to say you know um that's what i've been kind of playing around with it makes me feel better i like it you know it's extra work but i like it you know you know who say you see any watt difference i don't know i ain't really built two amps and done one with the b plus and one with not to see but but anyway basically man i hooked you up here man i hooked you up with some good thick 12 gauge teflon man i had a little short thing left and i'll tell you show you that too man teflon is expensive so this is what i do i have a bag and every little bitty scrap teflon i get i put it in this bag and buddy that right there is teflon it can be used for years on man whenever i need a little small piece here and there and i know sometimes you'll have to change bags and get holes in it you know from the soldered tips or whatever Really, I, should, I guess I should cut those off, but, yep, yeah, man, that's what I do, man, whenever I get that off of somebody else's, Teflon's Teflon. It's expensive, man. It's always good to reuse it. So this right here is some good, thick 12-gauge Teflon. Okay, so that right there is really hefty and good to go. Going straight on the 5 eighths. I hit it in the back a little hot, hotter just to make sure. And uh, down here at the bottom, you know, I just hit this on both of them, you know, and just kind of hit them with a little, spread that solder a little bit. Um, whew, there ain't much more on this one, I don't believe, man. Like I said, you did great on the, uh, on the tuning. You know, I, I hit about every point, man, you know, like. Like uh, here and here and on both your 10 ohms. I just kind of went in behind you, man, just to be, you know, sure. Just kind of hit every spot with that iron, man. Like I said, a lot of it I didn't even have to uh, add any solder to, man. You had enough solder there. Just needed a little bit of heat. Heat on there, no doubt about it. So, uh, yeah, man. There, you, there she be right there, buddy. And, uh, you don't have to use, I did this on the very, uh, maybe two or three of my amps. I just, it just felt right. I had a big 14 gauge like you did right here. You know, I, I, I later learned, you know, we're, we're dealing with high voltage at low current. You know, a lot of people, don't, I won't get into all that, but, you know, basically your RF is, high voltage low current so 
you really don't need. I mean, I've even seen 16 pills running small ass 18, 16 gauge SO239 cable because I mean it's such a short run, man. I mean, you know, I don't I don't have a chart on the high voltage RF for what it can handle, but you know, this right here, man, this big 14 gauge, this right here could be running a big 32 pill, bro. <laughs> But, uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with overkilling, man. I like to, I normally use about 16 gauge if I can. That's what I normally use. Just makes me feel better. You know, 18's fine, but I usually use about 16. All right, let me show you that with the hot strip, man. I got a lot of stuff to do, so I'll go ahead and sum this on up here, man. Give me another view at the front here. I just kind of go with whatever flow, man, with the grounds the way I ground the LEDs as you see I done the other one different than this one I just go with the flow man whatever I'm feeling you know what I'm saying so as you see this one right here is just a straight down like that it's just a like a 18 gauge wire goes like that solders to both leads and goes down to the board you'll the, the most common way you'll see uh, Fat Boy and X Force and others doing is they'll take the ground wire and just wrap it around the bolt on the switch. I ain't too big of a fan of that, man. Also, I tried that a few times, man. It was just hard for me to do that, to be honest with you. It just seemed like it was a lot of extra work trying to get it wrapped around it and stay on there while you tighten it up. But, you know, one way to do it if you wanted to, you could put a little ring terminal on the ground. Or, you know, add, you know, make the lead real, real short and add a thin piece of Teflon. I mean, it can be thin. I'm talking about 22, 24 gauge. You know, something like this right here, man. Something really thin. And then put a ring terminal on it. Put that ring terminal, you know, on the threads, over the threads of the switch and kind of rough up. Usually on the inside of these boxes, you know, that you got raw aluminum but you know still rough it up a little bit with a dremel i'll tell you brother this right here this right here stays hanging right here this right here i use so much this is not a luxury this is a must i used to look at it as a luxury but this is a must this is no longer a luxury for me that is a must you gotta have my dremel man <clears throat> And as you see, cleaning stuff, straight old 100% uh, acetone. Of course, you know that. Just don't hit it on this bare copper, man. Or, or, or if you scrape down a board with an SOS pad like Tech 9 does, then you can hit the copper with 100% acetone. Other than that, man, you're going. You're just going to see smears because it's going to start eating the coating off there. If you want to go straight to copper, I'll show you something. I'm digressing here, but look at this. This right here is a flux pin. See this? So far, this right here has not, I have not noticed this eating the copper coating off. We'll demonstrate it right here. Q-tips, man. You got to have your Q-tips, man. That's the, one of the easiest way to clean these things. There's a thousand, thousand Q-tips. One dollar, big brother. Thanks to my mom. <laughs> All right. Let's see here. Let's just pick a spot. I'm gonna pick right here, man. Just kind of this area right here. Let's take this flux pin, man. Just start, just start doing this number. Oh crap, man! I just noticed I only got about 15 seconds left. I can't do this right now. Okay. Um, I'll have to tell you about the strip later, man. But basically, you just lay those two strips on top of each other, man. 
and just cut them equally. Let loose of 